Hello and welcome to another episode of Fish and Hunt with Luke. Today, on this episode, I am talking about long lines, commonly referred to as gang lines or common lines. First, I'd like to talk about what are the components of a long line. So at the end of the line, you have a weight. And this is about a five pound lead weight that I have painted orange. Attached to that lead weight is a size 120 tarred seine line. And I ordered this tarred seine line from Memphis Net and Twine. This one in my hand happens to be a 200 foot long line. So at the end of this long line, at the other end of, of the tarred seine, is a weight that is about equal weight to the one as I have right here. Next I'd like to talk about how you attach decoys to this to the common line. So when I'm out in my boat and I'm ready to deploy, I go ahead and drop the weight to the bottom. We're gonna we're, for sake of, of this video we're gonna pretend that the bottom of the uh, lake or river, wherever you're hunting at, is right here on the floor. So now the weight is on the bottom. And hopefully you can see that. And once it hits the bottom, I like to strip out at least 10 feet of line or so. And that allows this weight to lay on its side and, and bury a little bit in the sediment and either that or grab in the, in the rock stub straight. So how do you attach your decoys? It's fairly simple. I grab my ready decoy with the leader line and on this decoy is a clip and I talk about this clip in my other episodes. So I'm going to zoom into the camera here and I'm going to show you how to clip this on to the, to the main line. So here you have your main line and I'm just simply clipping it in to the clip. Now. As you can see when I rotate it, it allows no side-to-side -side movement on this size 120 jumbo tarred seine line. And the size of the line is extremely important because if you have too thin of line, it will literally slide side-to-side -side on, the, on the twine that you're using. So, I've deployed my lead. I've stripped out about 10 feet of line to allow for the lead to bite. And now I'm ready. So I hook my first decoy on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss the decoy over the side. This decoy, the decoys I hunt with are uh, herders model 72 that I've converted to uh, divers and puddlers. And when you toss these decoys, if they land upside down, they're a self riding decoy, which they have lead in the keel, which will allow them to self ride. That's extremely important when you're setting up long lines because you don't want to have to go back and correct a decoy that landed on its back or on its side and won't fully right. A key point when deploying these decoys on the long line is the distance between the decoys because you do not want your decoys touching, kissing, etc. etc. So how far between the decoys should we go? I like to do an arm's length apart. Maybe something like, I got a pretty wide span, so I'm thinking maybe around four to five feet between the decoys is plenty sufficient. So we've got our first decoy attached. We're going to drop it out of the boat and it's floating on the water. And we now have about four feet to the next decoy. Now we're ready to go ahead and attach our next decoy. So. Again, repeating the steps, we hook the decoy on, and now we're ready to deploy the decoy. Toss it over the boat, and as you're motoring, you're, you're going to want to uh, put the motor in either reverse or forward, however works best for you, uh, and slowly move forward as you're deploying these decoys so they don't double back and get tangled with each other. Now, let's say, for example, we've now put out several decoys. Now this can be, it's all personal preference how many you put out before you add a drop weight. But in this situation, I'm going to say we put out a half a dozen decoys. Now we are ready to deploy the drop weight. 
in my hand, I have a drop weight with the same clip and, and you use the same method as I showed you with the decoy to attach the clip to the line. All right, so here we're going to attach the drop weight and I've attached the drop weight now and I'm going to allow between the last decoy and the drop weight has to be a sufficient length in order to allow this drop weight to uh, connect with the bottom. So again, we picture that as the bottom. We allow it to drop to the bottom. And again, the same as when we first dropped the, the, the lead over initially, you're gonna to wanna to strip out a few feet of line to allow that drop weight to bite onto the bottom. So now we are ready to attach a decoy. We can continue this process all the way to the end of the line. And at the end of the line, you're going to have another weight, just like the initial weight, and you will drop it over the edge of the boat, and subsequently you are done with your line. In another episode, I have talked about the advantages to using these drop weights, and I would ask you to please refer to the other video for why I do use these drop weights.